During the first few weeks of Missouri's archery season, the temperatures have been warm. But we've had some favorable winds, been able to get out and do some hunting, and tag some does. Deer is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Also by Reconix, Trophy Rock, Eagle Seed, Nikon, Winchester, Lacrosse Footwear, Flatwood Native, Morel Targets, Non Typical Wildlife Solutions, Hooks, Custom Calls, Montana Decoy, Summit Tree Stands, Drake Non Typical Clothing, RTP Outdoors, Yamaha, Fort Arrow, Scent Crusher, iScope. Mossy Oak Properties of the Heartland, Hunter's Blend Coffee, Motorola Lighting Solutions, Scorpion Venom Archery, Code Blue, Decode, G5 Broadheads, Prime Bows, and Redneck Hunting Blinds. Here in the Ozark Mountains and throughout much of the Whitetails Range, where timber is the dominant land cover, there's usually a couple of weeks you can hunt food plots before all the acorns start falling and deer are attracted to the timber. If there's a good crop of acorns, especially white oak acorns, deer will pretty much abandon food plots. This year at the Proven Grounds, the white oak acorn crop is relatively small, but when you find them, it's a hot spot. Earlier this year, we placed a Reconyx camera on a plot we call Big Boom to monitor deer activity. Throughout the summer, there was a buck that appeared to have good potential using the plot. Throughout the summer, we watched this buck's antlers develop into a fine set. Oddly enough, the only pictures or video we got of this buck throughout the summer was near a big white oak in the middle of the plot, so we named him Oakley. Once the acorns of that big white oak started dropping, Tyler and Owen decided to hunt a redneck blind about 20 yards away in an effort to tag a doe. Not long into their hunt, they spotted Oakley coming across the field. This was our first buck encounter of the 2018 season. A few days later, we pulled the card in the camera at Big Boom, and sure enough, Oakley was living up to his name. He was under that tree almost every afternoon. My 16-year-old daughter, Ray, was busy with tennis, but was eager to go hunting when she had an opportunity. Last season, Ray spent many days during archery and firearm season trying to tag a hitless buck. Her goal last year was to harvest a buck bigger than any she'd previously harvested. That was a pretty tall goal. She set her sights on a buck we called Southpaw.
finally, on a cold afternoon, Ray had an encounter with Southpaw. I was very proud of Ray for showing all the discipline, hunting all season, and achieving her goal. This year, Ray's goal was to harvest a buck with a crossbow. Knowing Oakley was feeding at the White Oak and Big Boom, Ray and Daniel headed to the Redneck Blind that's about 20 yards away. They got settled in the blind and waited to see if Oakley would show. It's September 28th and I just got out of school. It's a Friday, so I got out a little bit earlier. We're up here on Big Boo. We've been seeing Oakley around here a little bit. There's a lot of acorns, so it should be a good night. Normally, my goal each year is to shoot a bigger deer than I did the last year. But last year I shot Southpaw, so I don't really know how it's going to go this year. I'm just kind of hoping to get a nice three-year-older up and also take out a lot of does while I'm at it. After they'd been set up a while, Ray spotted a groundhog in the plot. Daniel tried to move around so they could get a shot at the groundhog. But before they got settled, he left the field. Dang it. The groundhog leaving the field, in hindsight, seemed to be a blessing in disguise. Not long after he left, Daniel spotted a buck entering the plot. It was Oakley. Hoping Oakley would once again work his way to the big white oak, she quietly shifted her dead shot field pod and chair to prepare for a shot. Oakley quickly closed the distance and got so close to the blind, Ray could hear him crunching acorns. shot the one that I passed up last year and then I remember how bad I felt when I realized that Raleigh shot the one that I passed up last year so I'm like no it's not happening again this year he turned where I could see like the full side and I like got really big and I was like okay this is a good deer and so I was like all right it's gonna be good he's gonna come right up here we had to scoot over a little bit but that's fine took a deep breath put the trigger and we, I saw the arrow go through him. I saw where he ran out. Hopefully we'll go down here and find him in just a couple of yards. Knowing Oakley wasn't going far with that shot placement, they got out of blind and took up the trail. Yeah, there's some on this rock here, right, right there. I know I went by the V tree. I just can't remember if it jumped over this log thing or not. Look at that. There he is. 
dude, what? That's the exit shot right there. This is only my second time out this season. Uh, I went out last Saturday and I saw some does, but they weren't in range. I didn't see any bucks, so I, I didn't really remember what they looked like, but I sure found out tonight with this bad boy. <laughs> I saw how big his rack was and I'm like, I gotta take him. Ray called me to share about her hunt and I couldn't wait to get up there and join the celebration. Look at the big bases on that <laughs> exactly thing. Exactly what everybody says. <laughs> That is nice. Man. Been rubbing. Got mm -hmm. a bunch of bark in here. Didn't have any ticks. We had like three. Man. I like that. I bet you did. I sure did. Very nice. Man, I'm proud of you, Ray. You put me to shame already. Once we got the buck back to the skinning shed, it was time to process the meat. Ray's hunt was a success because we read the sign and hunted accordingly. When there are lots of acorns falling and you're hunting in large contiguous blocks of timber, it can be tough to pattern deer. They can basically feed anywhere they want to walk. I recently was out scouting and checked a large white oak right on the edge of a plot we created this summer. I was excited to find lots of deer scat, tracks, acorns, and acorn caps under the tree. Clearly, a lot of deer were using those acorns. After reading this sign, I knew it was a great place to hang a couple of summit stands. As soon as I had time, I went back to that area to hang a stand. Early October, I've been doing some scouting and the white oak acorns are hitting the ground. I always like as many favorable factors for a stand location as possible. And in this case, there's another factor. I do have a food plot right beside the trees. And if deer want to nibble on some forage, they're still within range. For this mission, I need to use a very portable setup because I may move it in a few weeks. I'll use strap-on buck steps rather than a ladder type step system, which is a bit more permanent. Once I've got the stand up, I'll do a little trimming just to open up a shooting lane or two, back out, there's a cold front coming, and be back here in a couple of days. I want to make sure everyone knows that the Growing Deer team and all hunters should get out and actively scout to find these events that aren't going to be detected on trail cameras or other valuable forms of scouting. And I want to make sure everyone knows, even as excited as I was to find that area and hang a stand, I want to slow down and ensure I'm always safe. The most important safety rule when hunting out of a tree stand or hanging tree stands is to make sure you're tethered to the tree at all times. You want to make sure that if you do fall for any reason, the fall is very short. When you're first setting up a stand, obviously there's not a safe line from where the stands are going to be placed to the ground. So there's no way to be connected to the tree without a lineman's rope. That's one reason I prefer a summit safety harness. It's built to use the lineman's rope, a rope that connects to both sides of the harness and goes around the tree. Once I place the first step about waist high, I've got the lineman rope on, I start working my way up, placing additional steps. Once I've reached the height where I'm going to place the stands, I put my safety line around the tree and lower the other end to the ground. I use that end to pull up whatever I might need to finish the job. Once the hunter and cameraman stand are in place, it's time to trim a few limbs and make sure my shooting lanes are clear. Safety should be every hunter's number one priority. Returning home safe and sound after a hunt is always the best trophy.
Going out and scouting for deer sign is a great way to enjoy creation. But no matter what you're doing today, always take time to slow down and listen to what the Creator is saying to you. Thanks for watching Growing Deer. During every deer season, it seems lots of variables are changing almost daily. Acorns, no acorns, rain, cold fronts, hot temperatures. If you'd like to stay tuned in to the techniques we use based on these conditions, please subscribe to the Growing Deer channel. Yeah, I was like, you better be on them because I'm not passing them up. So I was worried you were going to say, no, you got to get some more footage because that's what Tyler was like. He's like, if we see a nice deer, we're going to have to wait a while and get some good footage. I'm like, if Daniel says we have to get footage, I'm going to be so mad. It came out, so let's go find what it went through.